President of the Board of Education, and on my right, Betty Robinson, Secretary, Michael Poole, Board Treasurer, Nathaniel Lewis, Board Trustee, Rance Williams, Board Trustee, Daryl B. Joyce, Board Trustee, Linda Wood, Superintendent, <coughs> Debbie Trump, Associate Superintendent for Administrative Services, Paula Lacey, Interim Associate Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction. Dan Bowley, Director of Labor and Legal Affairs, sitting in for Joan McGarry. Thank you. And uh, we have Ms. Uh, Anderson, Assistant Director of Labor and Legal Affairs, Vice President Yolanda Smith is excused today. Family business. Um, the first thing on the agenda is the oath of office for Mr. Joyce, Daryl D. Joyce, who is a member of the Board of Education. Mr. Joyce, could you come around, please? most 
<coughs> significant accomplishment for us here in this community is that we are here tonight to recognize Ms. Kyra Woodley, who is the first Junior Optimist Octagon International International Director from our community. Kyra, congratulations. It makes me especially proud this year that Kyra is on the international board because I am the governor for the Michigan District this year. So we are a major force and we are a major team. Since Kyra has been a part of Making a Difference Joy, she has run service projects on her own. One of the big ones is an international hunger relief project, Super Bowl of Caring. Last year, they served over 4,440 community members and or students. Over 70 members participated. They raised over $2,000 in funds, and they currently have three members that sit on the district board. This is one youth service organization that I am and we should all be very proud of, and they truly represent Southfield Public Schools really well. I feel privileged to just be here. Me being elected, I'm still, I'm still in shock. Cause like I'm just here to serve, and like you know, to be recognized for that, just just like wow, you know. Um, I really, this is really, I really appreciate this. So, you know, I not expected. I just, I like to serve. I like to start serving. I'm an optimist three years ago, and I never expected, you know, to to go to such heights, but. I always drink big and, you know what, uh, I'm living, I'm just living, you know. <laughs> Mr. Bolger, Ms. Stark, counselors, 
Use this time to inspire and focus our young people to make plans about their future. October 3rd, four students were admitted to Bethune University during an on-site admission. Our college acceptance wall at Southfield Regional Academic Campus is transforming into displaying the successes of our current 2015 grad. On Sunday, October 5th, the Community House presented the 24th Annual Student Art Town. I am proud to announce that one of our very own, Khalil Hughes, placed third. On October 6th, Michigan First celebrated its opening day to address everyone's baking needs at Southfield Regional Academic Campus. We are approaching our seventh week where weekly eight different staff members recognize one student who has shown improvement in academics, attendance, and or achievement. Together we are celebrating what students do right. October 8th at 9.30 a.m., Southfield Regional Academic STEM, STEM Club students left on, on a field trip to Henry Ford Museum. Students were enriched in, his, in the history of invitation and exposed to American invitation, industrial revolution, American democracy, and civil rights. I hope we're... I hope you were able to attend our 12th annual Fall College and Career Fair on October 8th. The evening was filled with valuable information, free food, fun, and prizes. Early the following morning, Kennedy Armstrong, Leonard, Leonard Coleman, Elijah Bridges, Josiah Reno attended a workshop at Wayne State University. The purpose of the meeting was to participate to recap their experience, experiences from summer C2 pipeline program. Have a good evening and thank you for your time. Thank you. Now we have uh, Ms. Brianna Richardson from South Hill Lathrop High School. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brianna Richardson and I'm here to speak on behalf of the South Hill Lathrop Charter. After being in school for two months now, I must say our freshmen have done a wonderful job adjusting to high school. Homecoming week, which was September 22nd through the 26th, was a blast. A lot of students participated in our spirit week, which included dressing up during school, decorating our different class hallways, and also performing in the class dance battle at our pep rally. After all of our festivities, of course, the seniors won. They were rewarded with a trophy. Late, the Student Congress organized our homecoming talent showcase, which took place during school hours the day before our homecoming dance. All homecoming court candidates were required to wear formal wear for a pageant round, complete an interview round, and also showcase their talent in front of the school. The show had a great turnout, and all of our money raised from tickets was given to charity. DECA attended various exciting events over this past weekend. Friday, they held a Zumbathon dance class entitled Party in Pink. Three different Zumba instructors came out to teach. DECA collected donations for breast cancer from everyone who attended. Students, along with family members, had a great time, especially knowing they helped raise money go towards finding a cure. The following day, DECA, along with Lake of Student Congress, attended a breast cancer walk downtown. Over 30,000 people were in attendance, and both of Lake of organizations stayed the entire time, completing all three miles. Sunday, a group of DECA members completed community service by helping our mayor, Brenda Lawrence, campaign for Congress. They walked from house to house, providing people with information on why they should vote for her. This Wednesday, we are having PSAT testing for grades 9 through 11. We have successfully sold all of our available spots. Our first parent-teacher conference of this school year will be on October 23rd with two different time slots, 3 to 5 and 6 to 8. We strongly suggest that parents come out to be informed on their students' current academic achievements. National Honor Society will be present at the conferences asking for donations to UNICEF, which is the United States Children's Fund. UNICEF's goal is to see and protect poor children in need. National Honor Society will also put on their Halloween barrage on October 24th from 5 to 9. Students at NHS went around yesterday to drop off flyers in the main offices of all the SPS elementary schools. 
All children will engage in multiple activities and, of course, trick-or-treating with their South Lakers. Children ages 4 to 10 are invited. The seniors are extremely excited for college and eager to know what it's all about. Lakers will be holding a college fair on November 6th from 6 to 8. There will be a large variety of colleges in attendance. The following week, we will hold our health fair in the gym <coughs> on Saturday, November 15th from 11 to 2. Everyone is welcome. Thank you all for your time and have a wonderful night. Now we have Ms. Eric Rutledge from the University High School Academy. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eric Rutledge, and I'm the representative for University High School Academy. This month's FCG has been all about getting students on board and ready for the rest of the school year. On September 11, 2014, University held its annual Meet the Teacher Night in which parents came and simulated their child's day at the U by traveling from <coughs> different classes and receiving lectures from teachers. Next, picture day came on September 29th. Although the entire school participated, it was even more exciting for the class of 2015 as they took their cap and gown pictures. As we reached our as we reach the end of the card marking on October 9th, everyone has parent-teacher conferences to look forward to on October 22nd and 23rd. This month, UHSA will hold its annual Pink Out in which students wear pink to spread awareness of October's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Thanks for coming out tonight. And remember, we're nurturing tomorrow's leaders today. Go Eagles! <laughs> of our math assessments. And as parents and community, uh, many of you have heard about our math assessment. Uh, it, in Southville Public Schools, we assess all of our children at the beginning of the school year in the areas of mathematics, reading, language, and science, and uh, four grades K through 12. So um, one of the things that I wanted to share with you is that this past Thursday in the Southville Sun, there was an article in the paper about our math assessment and the implementation of it. It's in the form of a question and answer, and I think that if you have not read it, I invite you to do that. But uh, if you uh, also uh, have not read it, I'm going to invite you to something. On October the 18th, which is this upcoming Saturday, right here in this room, from 9 to 11, I'm hosting a coffee and conversation with the superintendent, and I look forward to that because I want to talk about the math also. We're going to talk about the math assessment. I want to ask you and allow you to uh, ask those drilling questions that you would like to ask. We're also going to talk about uh, the implementation of our ETEX and our electronic learning platforms. We're going to share with anyone who is available, and that's parents in our community, to learn more about the technology that we've been implementing here in the district and we also will provide an opportunity for an open forum of questions and answers related to transportation. And I think that many of our parents uh, who are listening, our board knows, and also many of our parents here, that we've had a few little issues with the construction in our city and the transportation with our buses. And so we just want to help you understand what we're doing and how we're working to um, tighten up the late buses and also eliminate additional problems that may occur. So that's what's happening, and there's much more that I could share, but our young lady shared a whole lot already. Um, <coughs> we have a full agenda for you this evening, so I'm going to start convincing the conversation that we have prepared. And the first is I'd like to just share with you that as of last April, we adopted a new strategic plan by our Board of Education. 
and we're excited about that plan and we're ready and we've already started the implementation. I'd like to ask Mr. Mike Bajinski to come to the podium. And Mr. Bajinski is our lead evaluator for our implementation of the strategic plan. And one of the things that we're, he's going to provide uh, periodic updates for our Board of Education throughout the course of the year. And in addition to those updates, as we move forward, we're going to make sure that our community, our board, our parents know the alignment of presentations we're doing uh, for you as they align to the strategic plan. So this evening, there are three goals, particularly we're going to hit this evening. And the first goal is related to goal number two of our strategic plan, which is number, uh, which is to line instruction. The second goal is how we support our buildings and classrooms. And the third goal is related to marketing that we're going to be sharing this evening, as well as Mr. Gijinski will give us a real gestalt of this whole process and an update for our Board of Education. Thank you, Mike. Well, thank you, Dr. Wood. And I, I just wanted to mention, you were talking about the session you're going to hold with MAP. Uh, yes. Uh, the MAP program, the Achievement uh, Measuring Academic Performance, yes. I think, is the acronym, mm -hmm. uh, was in our last strategic plan. Yes. And I think it speaks well that when we uh, get into these initiatives, we need to take a moment just to remember that uh, it came out of that process that we had done. We were looking for additional assessments and knowing that the state doesn't quite know what the next meat test is going to look like. <coughs> at least, uh, I, I would think as a parent uh, uh, of a student in, in the district, I at least know where my students stand. And I know where they need to put, put their, their work and emphasis. So I want to mention that because it's it was a strategic initiative at one time, Absolutely. and I think it serves as well. Uh, we can go to the PowerPoint now, uh, and uh, what, what I want to do tonight is, uh, as Dr. Woods mentioned, we adopted, the board adopted this plan back in April. And as we said then, and we'll, and, and we'll, we'll say it again, uh, the, whole, the whole strategic plan is on the district website if you want to look at the whole thing. We're not going to talk about the whole plan tonight. We're only going to talk about those things that we're going to be focusing on for the next 100 days. You can't do 46 things uh, at once. That's impossible. It doesn't matter what size uh, organization you are, whether you're IBM, General Motors, or whoever. That's too many initiatives going on at one time. So we're going to try to limit <coughs> that. In the first 100 days, these are the things that we're going to be working on. Now, the process that we have is, is that once the board adopted this as policy and policy intent, I want to emphasize those words. What boards do is we, we, we adopt policies, and some of these are intentions which are, have not yet been put in place, but this is our strategic way of saying these are the things that we're focusing on. So, let's see if I can do this right. Uh, this is the first, uh, and, and we're going to run through these kind of rather quickly, and then Jackie's going to talk a little bit about marketing, and then we'll come back if there are any questions. Uh, these are some things that we believe are strategic initiatives based on the fact that they're not in place currently. One of the things that we talk about is to identify common classroom protocols, practices, and to monitor that. Now, we have, we, we recognize that, uh, that all of our schools are different. And at one time, you know, we had in many districts a thing called site-based management. The trend now, because of our, our, our current state of, uh, our, of our economy and the emphasis on student achievement, is that we're now saying there are some things that we have to do in common. So we want to make sure that we do that. And some of these protocols I'll share with you in a moment, but these things are basically related to each other, even though they're in different goal areas. <coughs> we want to train teachers to conduct walkthroughs. That's a new thing. And why would we do that? Well, the reason we would do that is because the research says that when teachers are able to observe other teachers, they learn from that. It becomes a learning experience and it definitely has an impact on student learning. We're relying very closely on what the research says on what it takes to improve student learning. And we know that that's the bottom line. Uh, the third thing that's listed up there is a, is a thing called instructional routes, and I want to talk about that a little bit with this diagram. 
instructional rounds of the process that was developed at Harvard School of Ed probably about uh, well over 10 years ago. And what it says is that uh, we have what we call uh, a process. And, and, you know, we talk about school improvement, and there's a plan that the state says you have to file once a year. School improvement or improvement of any organization, continuous <coughs> improvement, which is part of our accreditation process, is something that's continuous, that never ends. And the process is more important than anything. And there are three specific areas that we're going to talk about right now. One is the area of curriculum, which is the content. It's the what. Instructional delivery is the how, and it's the thing we have most control over. And finally, the last piece is something called student engagement. Now, when we talk about, I'm going to go back for just a second, because when we talk about teacher walkthroughs, what we want to do is we want to do this not for evaluation purposes. In fact, it has absolutely nothing to do with teacher evaluation. What it has to do with is to measure student engagement. All the research says, and there's a ton of it that says when uh, students are engaged in their own learning, achievement increases. So that's where we want to go. And when we talk about walkthroughs, we're not talking about walkthroughs for evaluation. That's a personnel HR function. That's something the state requires. And so we're going to start with a couple of schools and just pilot this to see how it works. And the idea will be over the next 100 days, we'll start that process. And you're probably wondering, now where are the metrics? Well, the metrics really on, on these goals are at 100%. That's what we're aiming at. We're not saying we're, we're going to we're going to go 50 or 60 or 70. We want this to be a district-wide process. Well, we're going to slow. An old saying that says, go slow to go fast, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start off by doing this in a couple of schools just, just to see how it goes. And uh, the instrument that we're going to use is one that Advanced Ed uses. Advanced Ed, not to be confused with Advanced. They're not even cousins. Uh, that's another process. But Advanced Ed is, is is what used to be North Central Association accreditation. Uh, what you are accredited by as a district, it's the same instrument that was used by visiting teams in our buildings. And again, it, it, it is a process that does not write down teacher names. The only thing we're interested in is what does student engagement look like in our school, in our individual schools and across our district. Because we know that if we use that instrument, which by the way has been psychometrically tested, a very reliable and valid instrument. It's one of the best out there, and it's available to us because we are members of Advanced Ed and North Central. So that, those are three things that I think are important. I want to stress, just, just to mention in the middle there, you see uh, a, a bunch of names. You see Marzano, Hattie, Danielson. Uh, Danielson is the, uh, is the researcher who's provided an evaluation process, and it links very well with Advanced Ed's uh, instrument called the Elliot, which is the Environment of Learning Observation Tool, E-L-E-O-P. They got that right anyway. But that's what we're going to do, and that's where we're going to start. And the idea is that this is a protocol that we would like to have in place in all of our schools over the next uh, two to three years, uh, I'll say it. We'll, we'll, we'll give ourselves some time to be able to do that. It's going to take time to do this. These are strategic initiatives, and a strategic initiative is something that will be something different. Okay, resource allocation. One of our goals is to design schools for analysis programs. We spend a lot of time looking at student achievement. Uh, we have individual programs that we have put in place over the years, and one of the things that our strategic plan calls for is that we will do something called program analysis, program development and analysis. In other words, we have a product that we've purchased, and I'm not, I'm not going to even provide an example. You can think of one in your head. The question will be, how is it working? Is it providing the results we're looking for? And we're going to try to benchmark this and provide some <coughs> metrics for you that actually give you some idea of where we are in the process because it's important that we just don't say, well, a lot of people or a lot of things or some or many uh, we're going to try to target these with specific initiatives. Uh, and, and one of the things that we know is that uh, 
uh, a board of education, a policy making board, when you put a strategic plan in place, you want to know what, what the results look like and you'd like some metrics to go with that. Uh, the last one there is uh, reviewing positions of longevity and length. One of our strategic goals is to look at something called uh, succession planning. Uh, the other day I heard that uh, in the next uh, five years uh, we'll, we will need 30,000 truck drivers, 20,000 electricians, 15,000 plumbers. Now that's based on looking at the workforce. Th those numbers are just not dreamed up. It's looking at the workforce and looking at the average age, length of service, and also looking at what, what experience we've had when, when do people retire and so forth. And so we want to be ready. We know there's a bubble in the system, and we want to be ready to make sure that we are developing uh, folks to take positions, uh, particularly in leadership positions, as we go through this. So that's where we're going to start. And uh, hopefully all of these things that we've just talked about will, will be something that we'll come back to you on. Now, let's talk about marketing, because if you're going to do all these things, you want to be able to tell your story, okay? All right. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bajinski. Good evening. Good evening. So, under uh, Goal 6, we're looking at expanding and refining the marketing of district programs. And so, we're starting with Objective 1, which is research. So, everything in the district is based on research. Everything that Mr. Bajinski spoke of is based on a foundation of research because you don't know where you're going and you don't know if you've arrived if you don't lay a, a benchmark in research. So we're going to start with a uh, in-depth telephone, telephone survey of approximately 400 respondents and we're looking at a mix of parents from SPS, from charter schools and from surrounding school districts. The survey will incorporate validated embedded questions and it will help us to develop our communications plan and set the framework for what we're doing, help us with our outreach, and benchmark where we are in terms of perception. How does the community see SPS? What does the community want from SPS? And what is going on with our competition? And so that's what we're doing under research. The information that we will receive will lead into objective two, which is planning. And the planning is the important stage. It's where we develop a comprehensive comprehensive communications plan that shapes what we're doing. And for, to give you an example, if the survey indicates the parents want more information on outcomes in curriculum, then that's where we will focus our communication. Just like you saw the MAP article that came out, parents want to know what programs we're using and what the outcomes are, and that's why we did that piece. And so uh, the research will allow us to plan what it is we're saying. It also will allow us to know what we're messaging. We may think we have an idea, but we really don't. You know, when you're in the house, you, you think you know everything about the house, but you have to go outside and find out what it is that people want, what do they desire, and that informs our messaging and it informs our, our planning. And it will also inform what we do for our winter enrollment uh, uh, campaign, our student enrollment campaign, which we launched in January of this year. And then finally, outreach. We're, uh, while we're doing this, we're vamping up our outreach. We've been working with the, the MyStar update, and uh, yesterday I sent out some information through that, and uh, I believe I saw an increase in the amount of parents that are getting emails. And so we want to update and uh, strengthen the number of people that we're reaching, not only through um, our basic communications materials, but through our media outreach, our uh, own media real, real estate, such as social media, our TV station, and our radio station. And part of this will be revisiting our PR team, our district-wide PR team comprised of teachers and administrators. So we'll be doing that real soon and looking at putting together a student uh, marketing team as well. Okay. And now, if you have some questions or, or comments, now take them. Marketing team B. Sorry? The marketing team you were talking oh, about? Go ahead. 
uh, uh, several years ago, we had uh, administrators and teachers who were interested in marketing. And so it, it would be comprised of people in the district that have a vested interest in the success of the district. Teachers. And administrators. Mm -hmm. Mention, I, I just want to maybe emphasize this if you have a question about this. Uh, one of the, uh, when, when we talk about the, the MAP program, uh, one of the ways that got us interested in that is that we did a project, I think it was focus. two focus groups a couple of years ago, and we invited in, uh, these were parents of charter school. Charter school and all of you. Our own parents. And, and we discovered that some of our uh, neighbors were using this, and the parents that were there during our interviews were talking about it. Uh, and, and, and what what I they they said for the first time I understand where my child is, and I understand what it is they have to do, and so that is how we got interested in that process. And I want to emphasize one other thing too is that. Uh, we, we do uh, test three times a year, and it's online testing, <laughs> and kids actually say they like it, some kids do, uh, which is really interesting. I mean, when's the last time you heard that? Um, but parents really do say that they understand, too. The data that comes from those three assessments, we, we go September, ja January, mm -hmm. Dr. Wood, and then May, right? Mm -hmm. So we get baseline, middle of the year, end of the year, and we can map progress. Uh, or, or we also have, a byproduct of this is a tremendous amount of data that teachers have that they can use in the classroom to look at what kinds of interventions they can and should use. And it really does take us down the road of what we call personalizing our educational program. And we think that is, uh, where we want to go eventually with this as we move through these processes as they all kind of come together because, you know, the bottom line is student learning. And unfortunately, it is, it is a test score, but one of the things that, that we're emphasizing here is what we call multiple assessments because you would not buy any product or service by looking at just one criteria. You would look at different aspects of a product or service before <coughs> making a decision which is what parents do all the time. We're living in an era of choice. And there's nothing we do about it at this point, except take it on and look at how we can better communicate uh, what is available uh, in, in the district for parents and students. Okay. I wanted to just add, um, for clarification and just for me, uh, I thank you, Mike, because you've been a tremendous resource here in the district over the past few years because whenever you're doing work, it's always really important, as Jackie indicated, to have that outside lens to help each keep asking those strategic questions, pushing the envelope. And sometimes we push back. But at the same time, it's that kind of energy that's required in the process. <coughs> he also talked about um, advanced ed and Charlotte Danielson and the importance also of the alignment that's happening in our district, which is critical that we continue to align, make sure we refine, make sure we tighten, make sure we're doing all the things that are important. And as the board has always said, as we do these things, we live within our means. And so we're continually doing that. He also talked about research practices and best research practices. And that's one of the things we're proud of in this district because Mike has always been a part of our walk as we start to unfold and to implement and to uh, refine these research practices. And on top of that, he always is with the team here in the district. And at this time, I'd like to just um, uh, introduce to the board and to the community some of the key players in the strategic plan implementation piece. Um, Mrs. Lightsey, would you uh, stand? Uh, Mr. Chap, um, Mrs. Tripp, um, Ms. Newberry, who's not here this evening, Alma Dean, Holly Szczynski, and Jackie Robinson, our key leaders, and Marcia Williams also, she's not here this evening, our key leaders in this whole plan of strategic plan implementation. So I just wanted to make sure that you all knew who they were right now. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for your leadership. Thank you. And the last thing that Mike said, I'm just going to keep reinforcing the metrics bringing the data, ensuring you see the results, 
make sure the numbers are right. That's why we have Clint Moran here this evening. <laughs> but those are all important pieces as we move this district through turbulent times. And when I say that we're doing fine, but we have, uh, uh, there, there's a future ahead that we have to just take making sure we're uh, in alignment with. So thank you so much, Mr. Yeah, I Thank you, and, and also thank members of, uh, of the core team because, and you, you, you kept, every time I say you mentioned the fact that, yes, I am the external evaluator. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we'll go easy for a while. But in the end, it will be pretty tough because we want to make sure that we accomplish these things because they're important. As you said, they're research-based. And the bottom line are our students, our children. And that's the bottom line, and we can never, ever forget that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. About testing, you brought back memories of the classroom for me. And I recall that when I stopped using tests as a method of determining where a student was at as a punishment, as a grading device, and they discovered that it was useful to them as a learning tool, they, they just loved it. They did so well, and they improved. Testing was a very good instrument. So I recognize what you're talking about. Thank you. The next thing, still under my report, I'd like to announce to the community, you know, Southville Public Schools is a tremendous district. And we have always, uh, under the uh, leadership of Dr. Cook Robinson, and we move into, under my leadership, striving for excellence and leading. And, um, and so we are hosting uh, on November 12th the Oakland County School Board Association meeting for our school board members and other school board members here in the county. And I just want to share that we'll be highlighting our district while we're uh, providing the meeting and dinner platform, but I also want to just compliment the leadership of our board and the leadership here in the district. So um, we'll keep moving forward. Uh, two more things that I'd like to share. Um, <coughs> on November 15th, and I really want our community and our staff and our students to attend, is our 2014 Health and Wellness Fair. It will be at South Hill Lathrop from, from 11 to 2. We'll have health fit screening. We'll have dental, flu shots, weight loss tips, blood pressure screening, um, massage chair, just many different things so that we as a community can just continue the efforts that we currently do have in place to help promote health and fitness. And with that said, I am uh, very excited and very pleased because we're putting together a new team to help lead health and fitness in our district, support our students. And I think our board members and community uh, can remember about two years ago, we did some redesigning with our athletic uh, leadership uh, because we wanted to make sure that our middle and high school programs were in alignment, that we were providing them more services to our kids. And that has improved but we want to take it to another level. And so with that, I'd like for our new athletic di <coughs> director for Southwell Public Schools to come to the podium and our two new uh, employees that will be working with her to <laughs> join her so that she can begin to introduce and we're going to be sharing updates along the way of this new redesign and uh, efforts to complement K-12 athletics, physical fitness, and health. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Wood. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Anika McEvans. Um, I was serving as the athletic director at Southfield High School, and due to my recent promotion, will now be serving uh, the entire district of Southfield, and I'm very excited uh, about that opportunity um, to give all of our children and community residents, for that matter, what I believe they are all deserving of. Uh, my students are Southfield Public School students, and so I really do truly look at every student as if they are mine and try to give them exactly what I would expect someone to give to my own children. So, with that being said, um, I just want to share with you a few goals that uh, my team uh, will lay out for this year and that I expect everyone to hold us accountable to and that I look forward to bring, uh, updating the board as well as the community on as we move forward. 
Our first area of focus is consistency. We want to make sure that uh, the policies and procedures that are in effect at one school will be seen at all of our schools, and that at the high school, middle school, and eventually elementary level as well. Uh, secondly, we want to focus on parity of programming and opportunities. And when I say parity, I want to stress that it doesn't always mean equality. What that means is that every student will have equal access to the opportunities that we provide in our district and that our programs that we offer at each of our schools will be reflective of that particular community. So for example, while we offer soccer at Southfield Laser High School, for example, at this time we don't offer it at Southfield High School. What we do is we offer other programs that are more responsive to the needs at Southfield High School, but all students in both schools have equal access to those opportunities. Uh, third is growth and expansion. We definitely want to continue our stride to improving those programs offered at our lower levels. Uh, we, uh, two years ago, made some changes at the middle school level that, um, although initially uh, were different, I believe have been highly successful and well received. And we want to continue to um, expand on the programs that we can offer at the middle school level. We're also, with some additional staff, excited to uh, be able to bring some programs for our elementary school level. Maybe not at the um, breadth that we offer at the middle school and high school, but definitely ways for those elementary students to get engaged and be introduced to healthy living um, lifestyle. Uh, um, with, with that, we do want to continue to try and see where we can add additional sports at our high school program. Uh, being strategic in that effort, making sure that we explore opportunities that the community says they're interested in, find out if they are really interested in them, and if they are, figure out ways that we can use our community resources to bring those to our students. A uh, prime example is recently so a parent approached me about a bowling club, and I, of course, said that we would be interested, so we're looking for some partnerships to put it out there based on community response we receive, then we'll move forward possibly with that program or other. And I mention that because I do encourage parents, if you're interested in providing opportunities for your children, that you seek us out and share that with us so that we can explore the, the possibility of providing that. Um, and then final, just a way to create additional opportunities for participation. We want to find other ways for more students within our school system to be involved in our athletic programs, and not necessarily as student athletes. There's opportunities to be managers, there's opportunities to be statisticians, you know, student trainers, things like that, and so we want to look at how we can do that so that more people are touched by what we do. Uh, and then finally, we want to increase our reach. We want our student athletes to become ambassadors in the community, so we want to see them out and involved. Uh, we want to see our high school students giving back and servicing the younger students in the community. We want to participate in community activities, and we want you to know who we are. Not that we're just students that live in this community, but we are student athletes representing your high school that you invest so much in. So with that, um, I want to introduce my team, who I'm very excited to have aboard. Uh, I want you to know these two gentlemen went through a very intense two-tier interview process. We had over 30 interested candidates that responded to our call for our open positions. And the two that we selected were uh, Mr. Gary Winston to my far right, Gary will be placed at um, Southfield High School at his home base and will continue to serve middle school uh, programs and elementary programs as well. Uh, to my immediate right is Mr. Brent Thomas, who will have at his home base Southfield Lakeshore High School, and they will serve as our athletic events coordinators. Um, I want to also share before I let them speak that we were very intentional in the selection process when we selected these two you know, young men. Um, we went out and interviewed all 30 candidates, narrowed that down to a pool of about eight, narrowed that eight pool down, down to about six who were invited in for a final interview. And they're going to highlight some things, but I want to make sure I stress some things about them as well. Uh, Gary's background, in addition to the athletics, is very familiar with ACT, MME. He was actually a testing coordinator in his previous position. And so we're looking for him to give us, to lend his expertise as we expand the student part of our student athlete program here uh, in Southfield High School. And Mr. Brent Thomas, who is an experienced athletic director um, and excellent at uh, building community connections, has a lot of community contacts, is actually a Southfield High School graduate. So we want to use his connections and expertise to expand our reach within the community. So with that, um, Brent, you want to go first? First of all, I want to say thank you and good evening. Um, as Nick
think it's the Alma Project of Southfield Schools. I attended Brace Early Elementary School, Leading Middle School, and I graduated from Southfield High School. I then went on to attend Florida University where I received my Bachelor's in Business Finance. Um, once I returned back to Southfield, I've been involved in athletics for the last 20 years as either a coach. The last eight years, I've been involved as an athletic director. Um, athletics is my passion along with working with young people, so this, I'm very, very looking forward to working this job and can't wait to get started. Um, one of the biggest things I like to focus on is character development. <coughs> of course, I want the kids to win on the field, but my biggest thing is winning off the field as they progress in their lives. So I'm really excited to get involved with that. And just want to ensure and enforce the fact that they're student athletes. They're students first and athletes come second. And I'd just like to thank you for being having this opportunity to come back home to Southfield and work with you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm just extremely excited to do this position. Um, I started off, got my undergraduate in industrial engineering at the University of Michigan. But just through my path and decisions to led me back to education, uh, which is obviously with my roots and my family, that we stress education so much. And it led me to go back to Wayne State University to get my master's in sports administration uh, because this is my passion. I love working with you. Uh, I love athletics. I've always been an athlete my whole life. And I just wanted to find something, my passion, pretty much. And this is what I, this is what I came up with, so this is like a dream come true for me to be in a position because I love to uh, just help children. I want to just take them to the next level. And just to take back um, what Brent was just talking about as far as the student athlete. I mean, that student comes first. Uh, so we just have to make sure that our students have the grades to go to college, even if it's not to be as an athlete, mm -hmm. as a student, and to be successful and graduate. So that's just one of my main goals. And like I said, I'm extremely excited to be here. So thank you. I am. But I am very excited also, and I have to share that I had a few coaches come to me and they said, Doc, are you sure? I said, I am sure. And so in any event, I'm so pleased with this team. I know we're leading again on untraveled territory about a design for implementing tremendous sports and tremendous health and fitness for our kids, K-12. And I believe that this is the team that will lead and provide that model. I'm very pleased. So with that said, come and meet your Board of Education.
from Bernie. That's my friend from Bernie. Come on over here, Bernie friend. I'm from Bernie and I'm in the 7th grade. Bernie Champion Program Peace Pack. In Bernie Champion Program, we treat people with respect. This means listening to others and keeping our hands to ourselves and speaking in the positive about, our, about each other. We'll treat each other how we'll like to be treated. In Bernie Champion Program, we'll care about each other. This means we'll treat each other as a member of our own family. We show each other we can care about playing together and sharing and helping each other out and being respectful to each other. In Bernie's Champion Program, we use conflict re resolution. This means we talk about our problems with each other. We practice and participate in Bernie's No Blowing Zone in preschool. So with our has been with us for an extended period of time. She started with us at Adler and has moved over to Bernie. And with this program, we do a Do Right Crew. It's a character development program. And not only is she sharing with you a peace pact that they do, but they also do character development, serving their community, and really learning about being an active participant in their community. Our next slide is from Adler. Oh, thank you. I can do this one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go on over. My name is Erin Atwood from Ava Elementary. I'm going to talk about the nature of the project. We are painting leaves make and making trees using watercolor and other paints and hammer to make the pictures. So what do you uh, ham and a hammer to make to make the pictures. We also use straw to blow the watercolor in the shape of a tree.
Hello, my name uh, is Erica and I'm from Vanderbilt Champions. We are doing clubs. We have art, jewelry, buildings, top secret, books, sport, sport and fitness, and character building clubs. I like how they are exciting and you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> my favorite ones are art, jewelry, and sport and fitness clubs. In jewelry clubs, make room to be. In our club, we do different art projects for art. For building, we build different things, like ramp, ramps and houses. For book club, we read a chapter, a chapter book, and we talk about it. When we do a, when we do top secret club, it could be a cooking, sewing, and other things. Sport and fitness, we do different sports and fitness activities. Sometimes we do Wii fitness. For character building, we do a lesson and how we can be better people and also do also be a bucket filler. Thank you. Next we have MacArthur, our Read Right Now Literacy Program. Hi, my name is Kamora Miller and we do journal prompts and Create journal prompts, and we have joined journal separate tokens, and we have a book club. And the book of the challenge is All My Honor, and we have pen pals, and my pen pal name is Mantrail.
much, and thank you for our families for supporting us as well as being active participants within your child's education and um, allowing them to be here today. I know it's probably pushing their bedtime. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so much.
So the, this year's financial statements, June 30th, 2004, will be submitted once again for um, for the ESO award. We have every reason to believe that uh, this will be year 35. So. <laughs> so in addition to the, the main audit report, um, there's what's called the fe federal single audit. And that's where we test for compliance with laws and regulations. And that's an important report to you because the district received over $7 million of federal money. And this, this report goes to the, to the state and also to the agencies that have awarded you those grants. And I'm happy to report that we found no non-compliance with any laws and regulations. So also that is also a, a clean report. I also, in your packet, is a letter to the board. There's, there contains some informational items, talks about our audit process in a little more detail. And tonight, there really isn't anything that I feel I need to bring to your attention uh, with respect to that. Before, we're going to go through some of the kind of key financial numbers in the audit report, but I, I thought, you know, because you have a lot of information, additional information in your audit report, I found it interesting some of the, the financial perspectives over the last 10 years. In fact, in the back schedule, some of those are, are reporting over the, the last 10 years. So from 2005 to 2014, a 10-year period, the, the general fund revenue went from $141 million to $104 million, a decline of $37 million, or 26%. And that's not without accounting for any inflation factor. So, you know, in, in, in those 10 years, not only did your revenue decline, but also some expenses went up at a faster rate than inflation. So like health care premiums, we all know the story on that, and retirement costs, which retirement, the retirement percentage has doubled in the last 10 years. So as a, as a point of reference, I found it interesting that although the revenue decreased 26%, the instructional expenditures or direct classroom expenditures only decreased 15%. And that's in a 10-year period from 71 million to 60 million. So this tells me that we know you've had to cut, but it also tells me that you've been able to keep those cuts out of the classroom to the extent you, you could do that. And I know you've had to make some tough decisions, financial decisions, and I commend you for, for stepping up to those. And I'd like to think it's over, but as we all know, costs continue to, to, to go up. And we're going to show a little bit here um, your fund balance over the last few years and where um, you're projected to go for 2015 on these slides here. But with that, I'm going to hand it over to um, Amanda, who uh, Nate is sick today. Nate's been working with uh, the district for, I think, the last eight years. And uh, Amanda's been working with the district for the last four, so, so this was her opportunity to come here. So. Um, so as Diane mentioned, this is the certificate um, for the ASVO award um, from the 2013 financial statement. Um, and I'm diving right into the numbers. So this is the balance sheet for the governmental funds. This is a snapshot of the assets and liabilities of the district as of June 30th, 2014. And you can see the general fund is the main operating fund of the district. And then we have a few other funds. The funded projects fund um, is where the grants are accounted for. Um, and the special revenue fund includes the food service fund and the expendable trust fund. And then the debt service fund. Um, this year only includes the 2007 that service fund as the 2003 and 2004 were closed out this year. So looking specifically at the general fund numbers, there's 33 million of assets, which this includes 26.7 million in cash and investments, and 5.5 million in state aid receivable, which is the July and August state aid payments. Um, the liabilities for the general fund are $12 million, and the majority of this includes $3.7 million in accounts payable and $5.9 million in accrued payroll, which is the payroll earned before June 30th but paid after year end. Uh, and then assets li minus liabilities gives us fund equity. And as you can see, it's broken out into various categories. Um, I'll just go through each one briefly as a refresher. So the first one, non-spendable, is the amount for which 
cash has already been spent. So this includes um, inventory and prepaid, and you can see it's 50000 for the general fund. Restricted is amounts that are legally restricted, so this would be things like the debt fund. Um, the assigned amounts are amounts that are earmarked for use by management but are not legally restricted. So as of June 30th, there is approximately 825000 of accumulated severance and compensated absence liability. Three million in anticipated tax appeals, four hundred and seventeen thousand in future capital improvements, and then fourteen point nine million of budgeted fund use of or budgeted use of fund balance in the next year. So this is the amount that was adopted in the original budget for the fourteen fifteen year. And then we arrive at total fund equity of twenty one million. This next slide shows the combined statement of revenue and expenditures and changes in fund balance for the governmental funds. Um, looking at the general fund, we'll go into more detail, but revenue um, was $87.3 million, expenditures $93.2 million, um, and then factoring in the other financing sources gets us to a net change in fund balance of a decrease in about $5.9 million this year. Adding that to the beginning fund balance again, we arrive at the ending fund balance of $21 million. So this slide shows the breakdown of where the revenue came from for the 14 year. Um, just to note, this is both the general fund and the funded projects fund. So total revenue was 94 million, and as you can see, the state foundation allowance makes up a majority of this amount. And this is based on the um, simple formula of blended pupil count times foundation allowance. For the 2014 year, the blended pupil count was 7,070, and the foundation allowance was 10,851, which arrives at approximately 76 million and also 76% of the total revenue for the year. So the main takeaway here is um, the foundation allowance makes up the majority of the revenue for the district, but there is very little control or influence that you have on that. Um, this slide shows the breakdown of expenditures, again, for both the general fund and the funded projects fund. Um, total expenditures were $100 million, and as the school is in the service industry, uh, it's not a surprise that the majority of expenses are salaries and benefits. Um, just for reference, the percentage of the total for salaries and benefits in the 2013 year was 74%. So it's increased 4%, and mostly that's due to the fringe benefits, specifically the increase in the retirement costs. So one of the questions we're often asked is how much fund balance is enough? Um, and this slide shows one way to look at it, by taking the fund balance as a percentage of the total expenditures. So as we saw in the first few slides, the general fund fund balance for the year was $21 million, divided by total expenditures of $93.2 million. Uh, it's approximately 22.5% of total expenditures for the year. And if you want to look at it another way, this fund balance is $21 million to fund the district operations for approximately 38 school days out of 171 school a year. Um, as you can see, this is well above the state average, excluding Detroit, of 9.6%. However, when we factor in the budgeted use of fund balance for the 15 year of that $14.9 million, it quickly declines to be a fund balance of 6.2% of total expenditures. the overall trend of the school districts in Michigan and the problem they're facing of declining student enrollment. As I mentioned, the 2014 blended pupil count was 7,070, which is a decrease of 1,483 students from the 2010 year. Um, and 
relating this to foundational um, for the 14 year, this is um, a, re a lost revenue of approximately $16 million. Um, and not to end on a bad note, but um, this is something that we can't help talk about as it has a direct impact on uh, the district's revenue. So that is all we have for you. Um, we welcome any questions at this time.
Good evening. My name is Mrs. Blightsey, and I'd like to introduce George Chat. Uh, he's going to do a presentation tonight. He is our Director of Secondary Education um, on the Technology Rest Readiness Infrastructure Grant, which is aligned to Goal 2, which is Instruction, and Goal 3, Technology. Thank you, Associate Superintendent Lightsey. Good evening to the Board of Education, uh, Superintendent Wood, and also the community. Uh, as Ms. Lightsey said, uh, part of our strategic plan is to look at how we work deeply and strategically integrate instructional technology into our classrooms and our instructional practice. One of the things I'm going to talk about this evening is what is called the TRIP grant, is a technology readiness infrastructure grant. Uh, there are actually two components to this grant. I'm only going to focus on one this evening. Um, in terms of what the focus of the TRIP grant is, it's twofold. One is the ability to help districts either develop or improve their technology infrastructure. The part that we're going to focus on this evening are grant funds we receive from the state and federal government as it's related to its second focus, which is to provide opportunities for targeted PD uh, regarding blended learning or using technology into instruction and also how we help our teachers in our schools to build capacity to implement best practices with regard to technology as we move to next generation assessments, realign curriculum, and so on and so forth. And so, as the uh, Associate Superintendent Lightsey said, uh, this aligns with goal two in instruction. Um, it really is targeted to goal three with regard to technology and how we integrate the use of technology to support our curriculum programs uh, our instruction and our assessments with that strategic goal that again to investigate how we use technology to really push the envelope with our students and our staff and how we look at alternate approaches to uh, traditional classroom delivery. And so part of this grant that we received from the state of Michigan went to actually eight schools and with the goal by 2015-2016 to expand to our remaining schools. So we really wanted to make sure that we had a cross-section of uh, representing the district at all grade levels. As you'll see, we have two K-5 buildings, we have four K-8 buildings, and we have two high schools represented in this year's 2014-2015 cadre. These are the schools that received the first round of TRIG funds to implement this blended learning PD. And so what those funds do is for each school, it provides money to, for teachers to complete a blended learning readiness assessment. This is a specific set of trainings and modules where teachers can become certified in blended learning best instructional practices. Uh, I spoke with our regional coordinator today, uh, Mr. James Winslow, and he already said that Southfield Schools is well ahead of the game in terms of other, dis other school districts within our region which includes Oakland, Macomb Counties, Wayne, um, and several other areas, in terms of teachers that have already begun, if not completed, these modules. We have an internal goal of 75%. Obviously, we would like to see that to be 100% in each of the buildings that participate. Also, these funds provide the participation in professional development activities uh, for teachers to go to the McCall Conference or Mission Association Computer Users and Learning, uh, to go to specialized pro workshops like uh, um, Google Training or Google Docs, Google Apps. It also provides incentives for teachers to implement instructional technology into their instructional practice. And what we mean by that is teachers that go above and beyond in these modules, participating in PD, voluntary and otherwise, uh, we're not talking hundreds of dollars, but maybe it's something as simple as a $25 gift card for iTunes uh, to buy some apps. Just some things to, you know, to again, prime the pump. And really the ultimate goal is to create model demonstration schools where the knowledge that's gained by teachers that complete these courses and these eight schools can be shared not just with schools that have not participated, but also with teachers maybe in other buildings. Because every building has a little bit of a, a slightly different emphasis. And I can say, actually, last night I had the pleasure to attend Vandenberg Elementary, uh, where they had a dine-in trick dinner. And that was their way to bring in teachers into, um, into the training. Uh, some had already begun, but they had 18 teachers uh, staff members that participated in that evening, each of them committing to completing the, uh, the, the scope and sequence of, sequence of training. So every, so every building is doing something different to incentivize. 
The whole point, though, is to create these models and these demonstration schools. And then finally, the funding does allow for us, uh, again, I have to get permission from finance from the superintendent, for uh, some niche specialized technology products. Uh, these are things that maybe would not come out of a normal technology expenditure. Um, I'm not going to you know, guarantee Google Glass, but we're talking about pushing the envelope of how we use instructional technology. Something like Google Glass uh, eliminates barriers for students that maybe they're homesick, they're on long-term leave or homebound. Well, you have a student in the classroom put on the glasses that they can videotape or live stream instruction going right on. So we're talking about these types of technologies and maybe iPad uh, stands so that students can use their iPads to purchase to, you know, create movies. Uh, you know, so that's what these types of funds are for. And for this round this year, uh, the school district has received approximately uh, $37,000 to implement this. So again, everything that's being done in these buildings are not coming out of the general fund. They are being grant funded. Do you have any questions? Thank you, George. That concludes my report. <laughs> okay, at this time, Mr. Boyd, I don't believe you have any reports, but I'll No, good evening. Um, the report for uh, human resources is contained in tonight's consent agenda. That concludes our report. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Thank you. And uh, we're going to pass on the Head Start report this evening. Okay. And uh, I'd like someone to open the consent agenda, which includes a personnel report and minutes from four meetings in September, which we have. Yes. So that we will uh, open report number 5312 and a consent agenda support. Okay. Uh, for the call for a vote? Yes. Cat? Yes. Mr. Bullock? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Yes. yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. And I'm sorry, I should have asked for questions. Were there any questions? Uh, um, report number 5313. Could I have someone to open report 5313? Support it? Move that over report 5313 recommendation to purchase ACT testing materials. Report. Uh, call for the vote. Do we have any questions first? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a question. I wanted to just give a little explanation. Alex Zazinski, did you come to the podium and just give a little brief update and overview of why we wish to do this? The best mathematician. <laughs> Not sure about that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, good evening, board, Dr. Wood, and audience. Um, what we are doing is asking for the purpose of the um, test material set um, pre or precursor to ACT testing. So that is the explore test for eighth grade and or ninth grade students, and then the plan test for possibly 8th, 9th, and 10th grade students. And you have the exact numbers of where we're purchasing those in your materials. And what that allows us to do is help prepare students for those tests. It gives us an adjusted composite score for them so that we can predict where they might score should they get no additional interventions on their ACT preparation. But it gives us data then to help as they move into their high school career and be ready to um, advance on that ACT test and score better as they go forward. And I just want to add, the reason that you're hearing this come before you this year versus previous years is that Open Schools provided this, pay, this uh, assessment for us and paid for it. They will no longer pay for this assessment. So we wish to move forward with this program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Call for vote. Okay. Uh, Mr. Williams? Yes. Mike Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Cat? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, could I have someone open report 5314? Approved. I move that we open 
Report number 5314, recommendation to approve superintendent's evaluation tool. Okay. I will just share to the community that uh, in the district um, we're making some changes as it relates to how our administrators, our leaders, and the superintendent is being evaluated. Uh, a few years ago we made changes how our teachers were evaluated and we started to implement a tool uh, that was aligned with Charlotte Danielson, which many of you have heard about. And School Advance is what we're moving for with our uh, principals, assistant principals, and instructional leaders in the Division of Instruction. And I always share with staff that I am going to align as possible to uh, what they're doing. I don't want to ask anything of our staff that I'm not willing to do myself. And so with that, we've had a study session and review with our Board of Education. And there are five domains to this framework, which is in the report. Uh, that covers all of the various uh, operations as well as relations needed to move forward as an instructional leader in the role of the superintendent too. So, um, hopefully that supports what you're saying. Thank you. Oh, um, mm -hmm. Call for the vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Williams? Yes. Uh, Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. Katz? Yes. Myself? Yes. And the vote is unanimous. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. We now have some of the to report the uh, open report 5315, authorization to purchase for South Hill Lake Rip again. I move that we open report number 5315. Second. Okay. Um, we have one staff guy here from the IDC department to explain this purchase. Hmm. Good evening. Um, Again, as we continue to look at um, ways to improve and enhance programs in self field uh, schools, um, we were looking at some of the academies of self field Lathrop, um, looking at ways that uh, we could help support uh, the learning initiatives that are going on in those programs. Um, in working with the, the staff uh, that, that work in those academies, we identified for the medical academy uh, a laptop card and some updated probes so that they could uh, perform lab experiments, write lab reports, and essentially um, have an easier time completing, uh, successfully completing the curriculum. Uh, so that is one portion of the purchase. The other is for the Vocal Music Academy. Um, in speaking with them, again, to meet the objectives of the curriculum, I was requesting an iPad card and a, a mobile smart board to be able to move around the room to, to better utilize the space. Um, so those are the two purchases that, that were requested. Are there any questions? Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Call for the vote, please. Yes, yeah, before I do that, I just want to apologize. Mr. George did not call me a name. Um, this has been printed for Eon, and his name was not written, so I sincerely apologize for not calling your name. So just for the record, uh, 5312? Yes. 5313? Yes. 5314? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 now it's unanimous. <laughs> Thanks, these people, for their generous 
gift to our library with regularity. They produce gifts, new books for the library. A wonderful gift. Thank you very much. And now we proceed to public participation. Uh, the board recently adopted an amended policy on public participation. Only those persons with concerns related to school matters may participate during the public participation portion of a meeting. Comments are generally limited to three minutes. The board will listen to all comments but may not respond during the meeting. Comments may be referred to an administrator or the superintendent for follow-up. As a matter of fairness, speakers with complaints against individuals are asked not to mention persons by name. Complaints concerning employees should be brought to the attention of school principals or other administrators before coming to the board. Your cooperation is uh, appreciated. I have one card here from Armin Gunther. Mr. Gunther. Would you please state your name and address? Thank you. Good evening, board. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Harmon Gunther. I reside in 19101 Green Spruce in Southfield. In recent mailings, we received this from the city. It is, concerns the uh, November 4th bond issue with a little map inside to show you what streets are going to be repaired. If you need, have a bigger map. And plenty of copies. Southfield is in charge of 262 miles of roadway. This past winter, they were all decimated by continuous freeze uh, thaw actions. And obviously, our road crews had to go through several times with full patch to repair them. They spent a lot of money on overtime. So, because we cannot count on the county to fix their own road, as you can tell by Lasher, where they stopped just at this side of uh, the roadway, not instead of going another half mile, uh, which is in the works, by the way. And uh, the state and that and our legislators are still fighting over who's going to pay for what and how. So the city of Southfield, in an effort to repair their own streets, all 262 miles of them, uh, is putting up the 99 million behind the shoe, which will last for 11 years. It comes down to 2.58 mil on our property taxes. I'm urging you to vote yes, because in my subdivision, which is in uh, Cranbrook Village, Section 11, we are in the five-year plan, the uh, first five-year plan. The red lines show which area is going to be covered in that area, in that plan, first five years. So I'm here to ask for your support to vote yes on this millage because our roads really do need it. Thank you. And if you like a copy of this map, come to me. Yes, I'd like to remind you that our school bus is run on these roads. Yes. Uh, it's very important to the school district. Well, if there are no more cards, uh, we are now going to go into uh, closed session. Uh, hmm? Oh, board members. Yes. Uh, Mr. Joyce, do you have any board matters for us? Mr. Williams? I know I said mine early. <coughs> Uh, just for the sake of time, I'll, I had to prepare uh, remarks, uh, but for due to the lateness in the hour and uh, the fact that we've got two more board meetings before the end of the year and not expecting Plant Moran to be here tonight, mm -hmm. uh, there's some additional information I'd like to add to the mm -hmm. 
media report, uh, but I would like to say that uh, congratulations to Ms. Uh, Landa, Mrs. Landa and Charles on her uh, uh, recent wedding. And also, don't forget to vote on Tuesday, November 4th, all open at 7 o'clock. And if you're in line before 8, you will be allowed to vote. <laughs> encourage your children who are 18 to vote. And it's very important that you teach our students to vote. We, you know, we uh, our ancestors, suffered blood and died for their rights. So we shouldn't take it lightly. So please encourage them to vote. Yes, but only if they're registered. They can't vote when they're registered, can they? No. Thank you. Yes?